You know, when you're playing disc golf and you have your backpack with you and you take it off, you set it down in the wet grass, maybe it's dirty, bugs down there, and you take your disc out, you throw it, and you put it back on, and you go to the next hole, you take it off, you put it back on, you take it off, you put it back on. Yeah, me neither. And that's because I have this baby. Yep, it's the moment both of you have been waiting for. My disc golf cart 2.0. This is my sci-fi disc golf cart mini as I like to call it because it's a little bit smaller than the previous one that I have and it fits in our cars much better. Let me show you how I made it. So as usual step one was to draw it up. I do this for two purposes. One is to try and figure out all of the dimensions like will the discs fit in and how will the wheels fit and so forth. But also I use these files to uh, cut things on my CNC router. Uh, in this case, I only needed two dimensions, so I didn't bother doing a three-dimensional model of it. So, bends can be a little bit difficult, because if you're just bending a line, like two-dimensional, on a computer screen or something, then that's perfect, no problem, but real materials have thickness to them, and so what I did was I did a couple of test bends on this to figure out if I wanted the outside to be like this, where do I draw the line, you know, to put my material on in order to get it at that distance and not a little bit too big or a little bit too small. So I did a couple of bends. That way I would feel more comfortable with myself when I screw it up, which I did. And here's the screw up. Well, I decided to make lemonade. What happened, uh, the lemons were that I bent uh, 11 inches this way. Then I bent 11 inches that way. This 11 came out a lot better than the other 11, but what I needed was 11 and then 8, and then 11 again. And so when I did, I kind of wound up messing up, and I decided, well, that's okay. What I can do is, uh, so here's the 11. This is open in the front, right? So it should have been 11, then 8, and then an 11. Anyway, uh, I don't really need this top 11, though because the next piece that goes on this has a bottom. So there's no reason to have a top on this one, butt it up against the bottom of that one and just double up and increase the weight and everything, right? So I'll just use the bottom of the next box up as the top of this one, which is probably what I should have done anyway. So my wife's a little uncomfortable with just the opening here and stuff may be falling out, even though I think the lip holds it in pretty well. So we decided to change up the design a little bit and add kind of a drawer that does this and that way we can put stuff in and then close it up. I think that design will also look better, so that'll be kind of cool. So I popped the, what I did was this was the bend, and when you, aluminum has no fatigue strength, so when you bend it back, it just broke along a nice line. I even scored it a little first. So I got a fairly straight line right there, and I'll make this into the door, and I'll just uh, cut the excess off here so I can use, I don't, I don't need to fold it over since I'll have a different top. And that'll solve my problem. So there's a uh, box two. I just bent this piece. I bent two identical pieces. They go together like that. And then the drawer will be in there and it'll slide around. And this bottom, actually this is the bottom because it's got the most marks on it, will go. So it'll go something like that. So that's the first panel done. Um, when I weld it, I'll take the back panel out. So how this is done is you saw me machine the aluminum from the front. Then um, I bought this because I wanted the carbon fiber look, but I didn't care. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I didn't care if it was actual carbon fiber. I actually did buy, buy a couple of carbon fiber panels, but this whole wrap was five bucks, six bucks, something like that. Whereas each carbon fiber panel I would have needed for this was 20 so if I had five and I think I actually have six uh, in total uh, pieces that I needed it would have been you know over hundred dollars so um, what I did was because this is uh, not structural at all and it was just flimsy I have a bunch of this it's called kydex um, it's also called thermoform plastic or I think it's a form of ABS 
and you can uh, heat it up with a heat gun and, and curve it into shapes. In fact, you can even, a lot of people use them for holsters. You can put your gun in there, lay a piece over it, heat it up, and basically press it down until it cools, and then it'll stay in that shape, and you can kind of use it as a holster or whatever shape you want to make. In my case, I was just using these as flat panels, so I just um, adhered uh, this stuff to it. It comes with a backing, uh, you know, sticky backing. I adhered it to that, and then I just match drilled around and uh, bolted it on. So I think uh, I prefer the look with uh, these uh, socketed cap kind of screws, or uh, these are panted caps, but they're uh, Allen. I kind of prefer those on this side so they were black and they don't stick out as much. But having these sticking inside, I think would catch on the discs or anything we put in there, even, even though they're sort of smooth, they're just kind of big. So I'll do the next panel and I'll flip them around to see what it looks like and, uh, and then I'll make my decision. But I have a feeling I'm going to have to go with these on the outside. There are the two together. I'll change the angle because there's light reflecting off of that. But, uh, I don't know. I'm starting to dig the acorns now, which is good because these really need to go on the inside so that things don't catch on. are better than last time but they're still really not good. Uh, here's the best weld that I've had so far. It's almost starting to look like a weld. This side was horrible. Gonna have to try and fix it. I don't know. I have a feeling this thing's gonna need some paint because uh, these exposed welds are just gonna <laughs> just really suck. It was a little backlit so I spun it around so the sun is on it. Uh, you can see how the nothing's attached. Uh, there's the cup holders. Uh, and then the uh, handle goes here, and my disc retriever goes there, and the wheels go down there. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. If I, <laughs> I wish I were happier with my welding. Okay, so I finally got this so that it will fit in. Now I have to try and line up holes here with the holes here so that the... Um, the handle can slide all the way through and so can the um, disc retriever. Okay, as you can see I put a partition in here and this one I bolted in. These aren't the bolts I'll use because they're too long. Uh, the drawer slide's got to go there. Uh, but next up is to put the back um, on this guy. I'll just tack it on. Time for an update. As you can see my welding's gotten a whole lot better which means it's merely monstrous now. Uh, there are moments of brilliance, maybe through there a little bit, but then it just gets, it's, yeah, it's horrible. And you can see how wonky this went from the heat. I had a real problem right here. I think I can straighten some of that out by bending, but the, the box is also just a little bit crooked, um, but there's not a lot of structure there, so pushing it back, I don't know, I'm going to have trouble with lining the door. It's close, it'll be fine, but yeah, it's just... I don't know. Oh, look at the... No, don't. Don't look at that. Don't don't look at any of this. Well, like I said, I'm too embarrassed by the weld, so I'm starting to grind them down. And uh, actually, I discovered this little uh, finger sander. I mean, I, I asked for it, and I never used it. And I remembered it was there, and I started using it. And it turns out, um, well, it, it leaves a slightly better finish uh, on some of these edges. So that's kind of nice. Um, I'm just going to keep working on this. i got a long way to go. Uh, and then I'll see what it looks like. Mm, that may look like a little pile of wood, but in, in fact, it's actually a drawer. Watch this. So there it is, all gluing up. Well, here's the latest update. I'm still struggling, but I got the landing gear done. Um, welding is still giving me huge problems. I'm just horrible at it. What can I say? But I don't know if you can see or not. It's it's a cat's paw. I put that on there for my wife. And I got the wheels on so you can see how it's going to sit. There will actually be some plastic feet that go on the legs. It'll sort of sit up more like that. But, uh, yeah. Moving on to the next part. Okay, I'd say I'm about 80% done at this point. Um, virtually none of this stuff is actually attached. I just wanted to uh, put it together just to take a look. I'm, I'm, 
Not real happy with the welds, as you know, and there's a little bit of crookedness going on due to heat warping and stuff, but overall, I, I'm totally digging this. This looks, looks really great. Uh, the cup holders, really, you know, you add all these features and you don't notice the flaws as much, and I can, uh, I can help with some paint as well, so I've got some ideas for paint. I intend to leave it raw, uh, and, uh, but I'm going to have some stencils and things that I'm going to put on it, and um, if that still, if it kind of doesn't look good enough, then I can always just um, bondo all of the bad stuff and paint it all together. But uh, I think I'll try this way first. The good news is I can uh, always do it this way and then do the paint later. So uh, anyway, I think this is um, coming out pretty cool, though. Yeah, I'm really happy. All the metal weighs about 8 pounds, and these wheels together weigh 7.2. So these are really heavy wheels. They're almost half the weight of the whole cart. Uh, that's so far. I still have the lid to go and a few other things. But yeah, it's coming out nice. I needed to make, uh, for my purposes, my uh, handle a little bit shorter, so I cut off seven inches. I wanted this to stick out. Uh, let me see, am I on the camera there? Yeah. I wanted this to stick out the normal amount, which is right there. So I went ahead and shoved it down, cut it off, and that way I'll be there. Uh, but that means I lost the little stopper that goes in the end here, All right? So I had to drill that out and push it out from the inside. I just kind of knocked it out with a kind of a drift. Okay, so I just uh, put this on here for to have some support underneath, and I bang that in exactly like it was uh, in the original. All right, so this part on the end here is 3D printed. You can actually see it's got some flaws in it. It's a very tight fit, but I think I want it that way. So what I'm going to do now is take the handle that I made and force it on there, and then I'm going to screw this all the way down until it meets, and then after that, I will turn, rotate the handle to where it belongs and drive a screw through it. Check out what I did with the lid. This is exactly the look I was going for. Uh, and the handle, uh, it's not perfectly flat, but it holds the lid shut so this doesn't come open anymore in the car when it's all the way down. And that's what I gotta do next. I have this, uh, one of these, um, U-clips that goes inside here and that will hold it against the wall and then I'll probably put something else down there. I'll have to figure that out. I'll probably mangle one of these to do that. All right, it's time to quit for the night. Um, i got to clean up the garage, put the car back in, but uh, it got a lot done. Everything you see here is actually secured now. Um, so the cups, uh, this is where the retriever goes and down the bottom it's got a little cradle it sits in. Uh, I'm going to put a lock up here so it doesn't vibrate around. The handle's in. I've only got it attached in one place back in there. I'll probably put another one down there. That's for another day. Um, but everything's all bolted. I cut these off at the right level. I have to uh, sand that down a little bit. It's kind of rough. I uh, drilled one hole for the wheel. I gotta just uh, cut this off at the right length, do the other one. So that's still yet to be done. All right, so I got the uh, wheels situated. I need to be able to get them off easy, so I've got these little, um, R, they're called R-clips that you can put in there and pop them out. I'll probably tie a little lanyard or something on there so they're easy to yank. Um, and then I drilled these on here. These are not the screws I'll use. They stick out too much. I'll, it'll be those cap screws again. But uh, these fit perfectly. They don't really even make any noise as is, and I planned on lining them with felt and everything. So, But that's why I didn't do any um, of these like cutouts up here because I knew I was going to put the phones there. So, all right, uh, well, I'm really happy with the way things are turning out. Just gotta move on to the next thing. All right, so I needed some way to hold the uh, door open, and I actually bought this guy. Um, because it pushes out, I didn't want it pushing out on the door because when I was trying to close it, it would just bend it. This door is very fragile. Um, it turned out, so I had, to, I had to drill a hole to get the gas out, and uh, it turned out it was a little too short. So I wound up doing the same to this one, except uh, it had actual oil in it. But this is a gas strut from my uh, wife's uh, hood. I, I don't know why I keep this stuff, but I do. And in this case, I'm kind of glad I did. Uh, so this one, I could mount further up inside and like this. And as you can see, the door opens right at 90 degrees and uh, shuts perfectly. So I'm really happy with that. It was a pain getting it in, but I did. And now it's... I don't know, I just think that suits the sci-fi theme, don't you? Alright, so I needed a method to um, house my little mini discs. And at first I came up with this. I was going to put it on the outside. 
And uh, this worked pretty well. It's, it had a nice sort of friction fit. It would stick out over the edge so you could get your finger underneath. But I decided um, this was a lot of real estate to take up on the outside of the um, disc golf cart, and I didn't really, I didn't like it. So I decided to make something a little bit cooler that would go in the side. And I came up with this idea, and strangely, when I first made it, it kind of worked perfectly. I mean, I didn't intend it to do this. I intended it to be work against springs and have something to hold it in place. But friction-wise, it just kind of stayed, which I was amazed at. Of course, I wouldn't need this over here. The idea was more like this. So this has springs in it. And you can see on this one, when the spring goes that way, it pushes this um, plunger back. And that's this spring here is supposed to push it forward to lock it in place, right? So when you have your disc in... <clears throat> all you have to do is press the button and the spring pressure here would pop it out and as you can see that didn't work so well difficult to get the spring tensions right and stuff and such also this turned out to be you know very wide and uh, realized that I didn't have much this way but I had more this way so that led to the next design and I can't believe this worked pretty much right away. So one little broken part, I'll fix that. What I did was I have a spring back here. I can show you, um, it's down inside there and I can show you the drawings. And that, this um, little arrowhead here has sort of a wedge design, right? So um, it pops up and holds the disc in place on the lip like that. Pops up through this little hole here, right? And if you press the button here in the front, it goes down as you can see and that'll release the disc. And then this little spring plunger here pushes the disc out. I'll demonstrate. Helps to have the top on though, otherwise this piece does that. So when this is all bolted together, I promise you, it works perfectly. So you just push the disc in until it holds, and then press the button and it pops right out. <laughs> I'm so stoked that that actually works. It works pretty well, actually. All right, here's where a little bit of uh, planning would have come in handy. Uh, of course, I designed this after I put it all together. but. Um, to, put the, to mount the pin so that it uh, lines up with the uh, rest of the mechanism, I couldn't get my drill bit in there to drill the holes. My, my drill, sorry, wouldn't go in there. The little one would, the big one wouldn't, and I couldn't get any angle on it, so I, what I wound up doing was taking a drill and cutting off part of it to make it the same length. But the problem is I cut off so much that the chuck is grabbing on the flutes, and I don't know if you'll still come out on camera, but it actually turns quite crooked. <laughs> but I wanted an oversized hole anyway, so I use it this way, and it seems to be working. I can barely kind of get it in there. All right, so I am in the final assembly step. A lot has happened between then and now. Um, actually, a lot more time and a lot more things have happened than I would have preferred. Uh, I tried many things and they failed uh, and I had to try them again and actually uh, finish assembling now is actually a bit more of a compromise than anything else because uh, I didn't quite get done what I wanted done there and I'm going to use it and knowing me I'll probably just keep using it and forget about the rest but uh, this is where I stand now. Uh, I painted this, uh, you can't tell because it's uh, clear coat but it does have sort of a satiny finish on it and I kind of like it. Um, other than that, it's it's supposed it's got you know lots of marks on it and stuff, and um, I think it's kind of on purpose. It's supposed to sort of look like a sci-fi, you know, maybe kind of a used sci-fi card, if you will. And of course, it'll get more as time goes on. So anyway, I've uh, started putting on this stuff, and um, I'll show you the rest of the process.
All right, so here's my drawer, right? And what happened was when you press this button, it's supposed to pop open. There's, it's slightly spring-loaded, but because the drawer moves so easy, I figured, perfect. You hit it, it pops open, you pull it out. But it wasn't working it, to the point where I made a separate, um, you know, holder or whatever or latch on the inside with a separate spring. But the problem is the spring was too strong, and then you couldn't push the drawer in. It was just bending the metal, and nothing was working, and I decided just to put a handle on it. You press the button, it'll pop loose at least. It won't pop out, but loose. Grab the handle and pull the drawer. Well, now I go to assemble everything, and look what happens. Perfectly. I don't know why it's working, but I'm just going to call it a win. Well, it's Florida, so it's been 94, 95 all day long with huge humidity, and now it's freezing and raining. Okay, it's not freezing, but if you go in that, it will feel very much like freezing. All right, anyway, i uh putting the feet on now. Uh, next up will be uh, the door. Next up, the wheels. My, uh, my wife made this little thing to grab the... Uh, the pin that holds the wheel on easily so that way we can pull them off real easy to put them in the car um, doesn't need to happen for two of the three cars but the third one it's what won't fit without the wheel with the wheels on so she made it a little pretty but uh beggars can't be choosy so she made them i guess she gets to choose <laughs> all right so um card is completely done and uh or 90% done, but I'll probably not finish the last 10%. That's the way I do things. But I've used it a couple of times already. Uh, you can see it's already getting kind of dirty. But um, it turned out fantastic. I love it. And uh, the people that uh, see it seem to like it a lot as well. So that's really nice. So um, overall, I did not meet my goal of making it lighter than the previous cart. It's uh, 26 pounds, so theoretically it's a pound heavier than the last cart. Although, to be fair, I think the last cart I didn't measure with all of its parts quite on. Let's just say they're about the same weight. I think it gained a lot of weight because these uh, carbon fiber panels, the plastic panels inside, I think they added a lot of weight. Because, again, the aluminum was only like 8 pounds, just uh, we'll call it 9 pounds. And um, the wheels were 7, so, you know, it's 16 right there. So I managed to add 10 more with all these other little features. Uh, the goal was to keep it uh, less than 12 inches in this dimension because that's what was going to make it fit in a uh, in one of the cars, uh, which I couldn't do because if the wheel was it's 12 inches and it's here, the cart would want to fall both ways, and you have to have some way to keep it from um, stabilized. I mentioned that earlier, I think. Uh, but with the wheels coming off, then it works. So it's less than 12 inches. This is actually uh, made to be 11 inches, but little things protrude here and there, so eh, 11 and a half maybe. Uh, it's, but it's, it's 16 inches wide, which is, a, I think, the same width as the other card. Um, but I have room in that dimension. So I'll take you around the card a little bit now, uh, and quickly, and show you its features. So this handle drops down nicely, and then locks the lid in place. I mean, you can see it'll come up a bit, but the disc won't fall out if it's, um, if it's in the car on its side or something like that. I really love that. And this thing is a, an extension for a paint handle. Uh, again, I mentioned this in, a previous, in the previous video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's on this channel. Uh, I will put a, a link in the description. Uh, but it's easy to, to use. You just press the button and then lift it up or slide it down. Uh, I welded a tube onto a tube here to make the handle. And this part here is the grip that was on the bottom of this pole. So I just kind of moved it up here for a finished look. Uh, the disc retriever is held in by 3D printed parts. Um, this part here kind of locks it so it doesn't move and actually you can see it kind of moves, right? Uh, but this part grabs that and I can't do it with one hand. It grabs it pretty nicely but it snaps right on there. So if you just push that in and then move this, a little bit complicated but I don't know, it, se it seems to work really well. It holds the grabber in place and it doesn't uh, make a lot of noise. So um, these are the exact same cup holders I used before. I just reprinted them, and they work perfectly because they're made for these thermoses, and they, they hold real tight. It can sit on its side, and they won't fall out. And I 3D printed this. I discussed earlier, too, so you can uh, pop that out. <laughs> it's great. Um, I only have one in because the top one doesn't work as well as the bottom one. Actually, I can go ahead and show you. 
it's uh, really tight to get it in, and it gets it goes in, and I can press it, and it comes out, right? It seems good, but if I push that in uh, and I leave it for any length of time, uh, eventually it just works its way out. So I know that's just going to fall out. So I need to work on that some more. And maybe I will, maybe I won't. <laughs> As I said, the wheels come off, and that's because I wanted to keep that 11 inches, like I mentioned before. And down here, and there's the little kitty cat paw that my wife likes so much. Uh, and uh, let me let me show you the inside container. So the lid just clears the top here. Uh, plenty of room for discs, honestly. This is more discs than I need. This is what I take. Still plenty of room for what my wife takes, and she. There's some overlap, so she only takes maybe three or four more. Still plenty of room there. And then, of course, up front are our butters separately, which I really like. Put a little bit of sort of a thicker fabric. It allows these to slide, um, but not make as much noise. So I really like that. We didn't have enough, but eh, it's okay. It's a disc golf cart, right? I had to put a little handle here because it was hard to grab the edge. Uh, but that's also okay. Kind of matches the theme. And the drawer doesn't pop out as much as it did earlier in the video. And that's uh, because things drag. And I think I might wind up adding a similar handle here uh, to pull that out in case that becomes a problem. This can uh, actually turn a little... It's 81 degrees and 81% humidity. And I tell you, it feels like that out here right now. <laughs> uh, here's the bottom drawer, right? You can press the button in and then grab the little lip. And I didn't want the lip to be any bigger than that because, again, I was trying to keep that that depth down. Uh, same thing, these are hood pins from cars. If you are a car guy, you'll know that people who have carbon fiber or fiberglass hoods use these to hold their hood down so it doesn't fly open on them. Uh, but you see there's still plenty of room in there. I've got shirt, extra shirts in there, right? And... Um, yeah, uh, that's about it, I want to say. These, a lot of 3D printed parts. These are printed for the cell phones, of course. I lined it with a sort of felt, so it's super, super soft in there. Works perfectly. I've been using it, like I said. Uh, this is for the drawer. This is here because the drawer slide needed something to screw into from the inside. Uh, but I also put some holes in it, both to lighten it, to make the print go faster and use less plastic. But also, we can hang things in there, especially right here. My wife uses that stuff for her hands. It can hang right in that hole. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, the stencils. So I said do not sit because I didn't stress it for that. It, it's possible it can handle it, but I, I didn't calculate anything, and I don't want to. 42, like I said, it's a sci-fi cart, right? 42, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. If you know anything about the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, and then just some generic... Uh, sci-fi stuff. Incidentally, that code there is the patent, the number of my very first patent. Yep, I have, I have patents. I'm really proud of that, so I wanted to put that on there. And uh, this, interestingly enough, is the symbol for antimatter. So I thought that would go good theme uh, with the theme of the um, uh, YouTube channel name, right? Uh, a long time ago, I was looking for that because, you know, antimatter isn't something that people transport so there's really no symbol for it for you know, in real life but I found I found a symbol when I looked it up on the internet and I actually contacted the guy who came up with the design and asked him if I could use it and he was a really cool guy and uh, it turns out this symbol has gotten some traction in video games they've actually I guess somebody else did the exact same thing I did and uh, yeah so I really like that and the whole thing is coated in a clear coat to help uh, keep the uh, aluminum for from uh, Corroding aluminum doesn't really rust, but it does corrode, uh, which is similar but different. And that's it. So, I hope you guys like it. Thank you for watching.